Hey! So this video isn't gonna have much of me in it. Don't miss my face too much. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Heritage Moment. I'm Claire, I'm your host, but today we're going to do something a little bit different. I am not the only person in a tour guiding position at the cathedral. We actually have five in-person tour guides here doing tours and other work here in the building. So today I decided to ask all of them to um, come with me and uh, show me their favorite window in the cathedral and tell me why it was their favorite. So I hope you enjoy all their really amazing insights and let's get started. Hello, my name is Eric Steele, and I'm a tour guide here at the cathedral. And my favorite window is the Queen Victoria window. So this window was installed in uh, memory of Queen Victoria, who died in 1901. And so you can see that she is kneeling here in the bottom right lancet. She's kneeling in prayer. But opposite of her, we have King Alfred of Wessex. And King Alfred was one of the English kings who helped to uh, sort of unify the war in English tribes under one monarchy. And that, um, the work, that work was done by Alfred and his descendants. And then we have, uh, in the center lancet, some familiar church figures, St. Peter and St. Paul. But back in the left lancet on the top here, we have an unusual figure for an Anglican church window. And this is Pope Gregory. The reason why Pope Gregory is in this window is that he sent this gentleman here, St. Augustine of Canterbury, to the British Isles to spread Christianity there. And St. Augustine ended up becoming the first Archbishop of Canterbury. In the right lancet, we have St. George of England, the patron saint. And then finally, we have King Ethelbert. And King Ethelbert was the first of the English kings to be converted from paganism to Christianity. And he was converted by St. Augustine. And so all these um, monarchs, as well as church figures, they're all sort of united. You can see there's a choir of angels above them. And then they are united again by um, the figure of Christ the King here. And Christ is seated on the throne. He's holding the orb of authority and wearing a royal crown. And so that sort of symbolizes Christ's authority in the kingdom of heaven to unite the kingdoms on earth. Hi, I'm Shelby and I'm a tour guide here at the cathedral. Um, the window I'm going to show you today is called the Great Commission. We call it the Go Ye Forth window here at the cathedral. It's located in our museum and is the newest window in our building. It was installed in 1997 and is by McCausland Firm from Toronto. Um, I think this window is really interesting because it actually depicts the first clergyman sent to our parish from England in 1699. So while being the newest window, it also establishes the history of the church. And that, uh, the clergyman they sent is Reverend John Jackson and he's depicted um, in the furthest lancet to the right, in the purple robe. Hi, I'm Blaine Pretty. I'm a tour guide at the Anglican Cathedral. This is my favorite window. It's St. John the Baptist, baptizing Jesus in the River Jordan. It was made by Camp in 1908. Hi there, my name is Liam Butler. I'm a tour guide at the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist, and this is one of my favorite windows therein, the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin. The Annunciation window depicts the angel Gabriel descending to the Virgin Mary, announcing that she is to conceive and bear the Christ child. The dove pictured above her, descending upon her, is an evocation of divine conception by the hand of God. The Annunciation window was donated to the cathedral by a woman by the name of Selina Valance, who was a widow of the late Reverend George Hutchinson. Installed in 1898, the Annunciation was the first window installed after the Great Fire, and this in fact makes it the second longest standing window within the cathedral itself. Completed by the firm C.E. Kemp & Co., this window possesses many features which are a hallmark of the Kemp style of windows, many of which we have here in this cathedral. Some of these features would include the use of tracery in the negative space instead of clear glass, the use of green tones, and also the use of peacock feathers in place of angel wings. This last one is a device which I particularly like in this window, as well as the gorgeous rich blue backdrop of the Nazarene hills and city behind. And not easy. Good afternoon. My name is Michael, and I'm a tour guide for the Anglican Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in downtown St. John's. What I'd like to do today is present my favorite window in this entire cathedral, that being this window right here. 
This is the resurrection window. It was installed in 1886 by Lavers, Barad, and Westlake, and it was the only window to survive the Great Fire of 1892, and is also the oldest window currently present in this entire cathedral. Now, although this window is exemplary in its Gothic or Neo-Gothic stained glass style, the reason I like it so much is not for what it aspires to be, but rather because of its imperfections. Uh, an example of such imperfections is the one that can be found on Jesus' face. As you can see, there is a line that is bisecting his face just beside his nose. Um, as you heard earlier, this is the only window to have survived the Great Fire of 1892. And this line is actually a direct result of that. The fire caused the lead in the framing of this window to melt, and some of that dripped onto Jesus' face, giving that imperfection that you see there. There are more imperfections in this window that make it interesting, but these ones are actually intentional. If I can bring your attention to the top right quatrefoil, you'll see that it is supposed to spell the word Pax, which translates generally to voice. However, as you can proper, properly see, it is not only scrambled, but also upside down. This actually reflects an interesting piece of architectural philosophy held by the architect of this cathedral. It was his belief that nothing in nature was perfect, and if we are to make a cathedral, then it should reflect that imperfection that is found in nature. As such, that window was installed upside down and flipped so that this window would contain some of that philosophical imperfection that can be found elsewhere throughout this cathedral. Another reason I like this, cathedral, or this window is not necessarily because of an imperfection, but rather because of an interesting thematic design that is contained within it. If I bring your attention to the topmost quatrefoil, you will see that that window contains the design of a phoenix rising from the ashes. I think this is just so incredibly appropriate and beautiful, seeing as this is the only stained glass window in this cathedral that survived the Great Fire of 1892, and that this cathedral itself was burned and then rebuilt after the, that great fire into what you see now today. My name is Michael. Thank you very much for your time. Anyway, that's everything. Aren't they so interesting? If you're still interested in learning more, you can take a tour with any of these fabulous tour guides for the rest of the summer, Tuesday to Friday, 12 to 7, and Saturday, 12 to 5. Thank you so much for watching.